Hi again, welcome to the garage, I'm Pierre. This time is uh, time to do some maintenance on the uh, TIG, TIG machine. Uh, normally TIG and uh, stick machines, if you don't have any special features and uh, no, uh, no extra, no much extra stuff on it, uh, easy, clean up the fans, clean up the machine a little bit, make sure the fans work properly, check the cables for cracks or uh, defects or whatever, and uh, that's about all they require. If you get water torch or liquid, let's say liquid torch uh, cooled the, uh, the, the, uh, on the on the machine like this you need to do a little bit more uh, pay a little bit more attention to your machine uh, you'll you'll be needing rig on a regular base to change the uh, cooling liquid in there normally once a year it's about the average uh, time that way it should be changed flushed cleaned up and changed uh, depending upon the uh, harshness you know the the harshness of the conditions it's in which it's been used here it's not used very often the conditions are you know pretty ideal there's not not as much dust as a uh, regular fab shop but uh, even there has to be done um be careful there are two time there are two kinds of uh cooling liquids there's one kind that needs to be uh resisting or adapted to high frequency which this machine is equipped with and machines that will do aluminum that will do uh you know uh, high frequency start and things like that will use mo lots of times high frequency so uh you need to get the proper uh, liquid and the other type which is mostly used in push pull guns and mig machines uh that will um be specially formulated for uh, aluminum contact so uh, be careful on choosing uh, I have the uh, little paper from Miller here which gives the uh, co conditions of utilization on that so I'll be showing a big uh, big picture of this I'll be using my method to flush it you know and uh, refill it um, you'll see the coolant is not very uh, very changed it's pretty still pretty clean it doesn't show much wear on it I mean sometimes maybe I'll wait more a little bit more in the year but it's like I say it's not intensively used so it's not exactly uh, you know submitted to as bad conditions as it be uh, a machine that's being worked every day I used to work much more with it but now I slow down um let's proceed let's just see how we uh, how we do it different machines might have a little bit different procedures but the principles are pretty much the same I'll be using this uh, Canadian made power weld coolant fluid it's going to be good enough uh, for uh, the application with the uh, high frequency TIG machine that's Excellent, uh, excellent coolant. Okay, on this model, this is a um, this is a Miller Coolmate three and a half, three point five. It it means it got three and a half gallons of uh, cooling uh, liquid in there. The uh, main main port of entry is the uh, cap there. We also have a filter there, and uh, let's go to the front. So for the first step on this, you have uh, normally this is well detailed on this one. Um, this is a uh, left hand tread I mean I'm left handed so uh, they, they made tread tread expressly for me haha <laughs> joke you gotta input to the input to the torch which will go you know going around this uh, this little loop around the torch this is the input the cool uh, the cool liquid and you got the return which is the uh, hot liquid so if you undo this you will have uh, a direct access to the return part of the pump now the best the best way I found to do this is to unplug this side get to the uh, over a bucket and there's three and a half ga uh, gallons in there so it's a five gallon bucket so make sure you have enough room to uh, get rid of the liquid next thing to do uh, I'll start the welder because uh, the uh, pump is directly plugged into the welder and as you can see now the liquid from the uh, reservoir is pumped directly to the torch and down the uh, down the bucket there by the return. So instead of going back into the uh, bu the um, the tank, the uh, reservoir, it just goes in the uh, in the pail here. I'm not gonna uh, bore you with the process of all the uh, emptying. We'll be back as uh, as it gets empty. Okay, since since the uh, lots of the uh, a lot of the coolant is still in the bay, uh, like needs to be brought to the in inlet uh, of the pump. We need to raise a little bit the uh, front of the, the welder since the uh, pickup is mostly in the back there. I'm just going to add a few lifters there. Okay, down. No, it's not going to lean. See, it's good. So this is going to allow more, uh, more of the antifreeze to... Uh, just uh, get get off the um, the tank, and also you you wouldn't run, want to rinse this with uh, normal tap water because of minerals in there and uh, those kinds of things. If you really want to flush it or uh, do something good about it, 
get some distilled water, uh, ionized water. That would be uh, a better bet. Okay, we're almost empty. Just a uh, few gurgles, a few drops in the bottom. Won't, uh, won't bother too much. And I'm going to let down the uh, welder on all sides. Okay, now that everything is uh, flushed, and I'm going to put back the connector here in its proper place. This is uh, like a, a left-hand thread. And all you need is a good snug, not to uh, over-tighten. Just be aware of that. Okay, there's one thing there that needs to be uh, checked, is the filter. <coughs> Let me get the uh, filter out of there. There you go, there's still a little bit of a coolant in there. Let's check, this is just a mesh and uh, easy to uh, easy to clean up. Okay, this is a filter. There's a few few little things in there, not, not much because this is a pretty much of a closed circuit, uh, you know, uh, cooling system. There's not much that can go in there. I'll just go use some uh, soap and water, do a little clean up and rinse it, put it back and I'll be uh, ready to go. As of today, my uh, particular intervention, I'm using uh, a Coolmate 3.5. The Coolmate 3.5 uses this type of filter that the number there. This is for the Miller, uh, the Miller machines replacement. Um, it won't need to be changed since it can be pretty well uh, cleaned and uh, reused. Uh, if you need to be changing it, this is the number. This is the uh, coordinates for the uh, filter itself. Okay, filter's been cleaned with uh, soap and water. No more particles in there. Back in place. There you go. And that's the right end thread with the left ender. So we can uh, start reinstalling the uh, cooling uh, liquid in there. Now, I, I had quite a few funnels, but they're kind of dirty. So I made myself one that's pretty clean. Co only cost five cents. It costs five cents because we've got deposit here. And it's, uh, let's say, food grade. So it should be pretty good plastics. There you go. We'll put the uh, three and a half gallons in there. So we're back and uh, we're back when we finish because uh, I don't know you don't want to see three gallons go through this. One down, two down. I got it. This is going back to the recycling center. The dirty funnel, dirty stuff. We don't care too much. At least I won't feel bad if I drop any. <laughs> there you go. While we're at it, might as well just do a little uh, dusting. Take the thing outside and uh, 